Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here for the start of a new campaign in Old Rule Blues, A to Z series, which we're playing as the Nitsitapi, which I'm sure I'm saying wrong, so if you know how to pronounce it correctly, please let me know in the comments below because I'd rather not screw it up, but I know oh, I'm going to screw it up if not already screwed it up. Um, so we are led by Chief Jeremy Oldgun, a hero somewhat retired. The old gun of the Blackfoot Confederacy has seen more years go by than most, with an equally large repertoire of tales as a tale. As youth was spent adventuring, wandering through the neighboring lands and scavenging what the destroyed society of old had left behind. His favorite tales of recount are those of the pristine valleys in the mountains and the antics of his children, but such peaceful stories do not hawk the youth as much as he'd like, or hook the, hook, hook the youth. Yarns featuring Yao Guai and mad robots were popular enough, but now, accounts of the war against Zack Company, a defunct band of soldiers descended from the pre-war militia, were most sought after all. Uh, their destruction was the beginning of Jeremy's ascension for chief, but it was marked with more than enough old bloodshed for the like, old gun's tastes. Adventure is a fine thing, but war is an ugly beast. But we have unique focus tree with the real people. Nitsitapi, the real people, is what we call ourselves. Our origins go back to before the Great War, even before America. And memories of reservations. Long ago, the Nitsitapi signed treaties when they did not fully understand, giving access to their lands to those who claimed to, to who claimed to own it, and forced us on reservations. <clears throat> but this great crime did not come without one benefit: uh, the real people. Nitsitapi, the real people. Even her name speaks to our history. The first people to walk this land. In ancient days, before the bombs rained fire on the world, even before America was formed or any white man had set foot on this continent, we roamed the plains of Montana and Alberta. A life of hunting as nomads, of farming in the hills, and war with our neighbors. Others may have thought our life simple and quaint, but we thrived and our spirits were true. The other peoples of the plains and mountains feared our might and unity, and made treaties with us to secure the peace. But nothing lasts forever in time civilization would come push us from our ancestral lands. But we never forgot and never surrendered who we were. Adventures of Jeremy Oldgum. Many years ago, an enterprising young Nitsitapi hunter ventured out of the mountains to explore the lands of Montana. The adventures of Jeremy Oldgun are still legendary among the people of Montana, most of all his conflict with Zack Company. We also have Nitsitapitzin. Oh, that's not bad. The Nitsitapi under Oldgun have embraced a simple philosophy, in a way sent as treacherous as the one of today, to live honest and true among another's paramount. To this end, they become united like few other groups in the modern world have. They won't go quietly, and memories of horror. Our forefathers have passed on the stories of what the United States and Canada did to our ancestors, horrific conditions they were put under. They were indoctrinated, enslaved, beaten, and worse. We'll never let this happen again, and if they try, their blood will soak the land they call home. Memories of reservations passed. When the first explorers reached our lands, we began to realize that we would lose our position of strength. They brought guns and tools, and above all else, numbers. There are many battles and great tragedies befell our people at the hands of the Americans. The Canadians came and offered us treaties should we sign away our lands. Our ancestors did not know what they signed away, and were soon forced back to reservations to live in squalor and obscurity. But the reservations did bring one saving grace. So far away and irrelevant were redeemed that China, the land across the big water of the west, did not deign to bomb us. We were spared the horrors of the fire and radiation that killed so many others, and with this we found a chance to rebuild. A new age of civilization, or <clears throat> of the Nitsitapi, began. Huh. And this will unlock uh, the generic decision. So we can learn from our past, get gifts, it's not bad, Sundance, more HP, pop. Population, organization, regain more population, which we'll need because we're already out immediately. Essence of everything, we get some dogs. Adds units to template native guard. Huh. Life without the buffalo. Fear of the underwater people. Huh. Learning from our past. Well, I like all that stuff, but we have this stuff here too. So we can do industry stuff, but you want more political power. There are many old abandoned sites around Montana. Let's start looking and see what we can't find. Uh, what do we have around here? Who do we have? Uh, we're led by the people. Political power. Anything super unique? Not really. That's not bad. That position's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab Golden Gecko for even more stability, more political power, and whatnot. That's what I usually grab. Um, a civilian industry. I don't mind that either. Uh, scraping old hunks, hunks of junk. Tons of old scrap all over the place, either from the old National Guard checkpoints or other stuff. Let's use them in our own means. Adventures of the Chief. Uh, Jeremy Oldgun. 180 years later, the trouble will come to our people. Zack Company, formed from the remnants of a rogue militia, began to menace, oppress, and bully the people of Montana, extorting what they wanted and threatening violence to those who wouldn't comply. They were very little more than raiders playing mercenary. And in time, they came for Browning to hurt our tribe. I stood against them and I fought. Many died in the struggle. It was not glorious, and perhaps we retaliated too hard, but I did my duty to my people and we survived. Zack Company survived as well. And now to the south, the ancient Americans have returned, eyeing both our lands with jealousy. A time of great struggle may be soon upon us, but we have faith in little ones. We're not without friends, after all. Watering holes. 
Between the harsh winters and the derelict countryside, you think we'd have a lot more water to go around. Look at the caps. Montana assertions. We had to prove ourselves to survive in the wasteland. And Montana military, huh? More war sport, army XP, it's not bad. Starting level of new attacking. Huh. Arms workshops. How to? Old guns, new people. Some of the old guns stashed at the checkpoints can be filled up. Or fixed up. More arms workshops, and I do want to get this research slot pretty fast, too. That would be quite ideal. Good. What we have right now is not bad, but I still want some of this, too. Uh, we're using Old World Blues, Old World Blues Tech Expansion, Old World Blues Generic Decisions Revamped, Old World Blues. Uh, for the little guys, just in case to make it more interesting for everybody. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what we got going on right now. Gliders are good. We'll get there eventually. We need more guns. We need more spec ops equipment. So we have two units of special forces, which are ten combos, which are okay. They do have a recon on them, which is nice already. And they have seven divisions of infantry, which are only ten combos, which is you know pretty average. Push buns wildly. We found an intact generator. One of the guys pushed a bunch of buns on it, and thankfully it turned on instead of blowing up or something. Yeah, that's good. Home's law, very nice. What else do we have here? Uh, more output, please. And retrofitting the lines. Look at that. Working production lines after all these years. Montana's ground. There's plenty of junk all around we can use that isn't just hunks of metal and stuff. And the future Montana, because I want that research lot. All of our development has led to this. Will our future be brighter or will it be dim and fading? Because, well, we're not super advanced. We do have advanced special forces tech, which is pretty cool. No power armor. No va naval vessels. At least for now. So that's good. So that stuff is done for now. Barrage balloons are okay. Just to get us ready for the future. Get some construction speed. Uh, and we're also going to go conventional warfare. It doesn't make sense to go conventional warfare, but where we're going to head to, uh, we're going to use conventional warfare. What do we have here? Military theorists, conventional warfare, land doctrine. Yeah, there you go. The Montana Decree. Very nice. Montana scrounging. A few more resources. Another workshop would be nice too. But we are on a historical. Having a good old time. So after we get grabbed that, Montana military would be bad. I wouldn't mind Montana assertions and grabbing both more cities. These building tax and patrol procurement, they're not bad, but we don't need them extremely quickly right now. I'm not sure if anyone's going to really attack us too. But we'll do something like that for now. How close to read? There we go. Because we do want to get some anti tank because we will have to fight MacArthur eventually. And that's probably going to be a giant pain in the butt. That's not bad for either. Uh huh. So then, what's the next story we're going to do? Let's learn from our past. The wasteland is harsh and untamed place, devoid of the trappings of what the Americans called civilization. But our ancestors never needed them or their way of life to begin with. It's time to look back and find the way forward in our own history from Morning Stag. Sounds smart to me. We have only one. Well, we have more military factories we're using now. We've got plenty here. We're going to use dogs, uh, travel scout kits, get support equipment, of course, as well. Uh, very nice. Let's go with that next immediately. Five research slots. Very nice. A little more manpower would be delightful to use. Military command. Uh, these guys are all generic for the most part, which kind of sucks. We get more recon, more gain. Um, slightly more construction speed, more monthly population, support equipment, reliability. I like that idea. I can't grab anyone there yet. Economics, uh, that's 10 and 15%. I wouldn't mind getting this one first, get more opinion. Gives a little more production costs. Oh, we don't need that extra right now, but we're definitely gonna need it later on. You know, we could wait and grab this guy. But that's gonna take so many days. I'd rather just have a general right now, just in case. Reckless. Learning from our past. The wasteland is a strange place, very different from the peaceful, uh, settled lands before the war. Most people are clamoring to return to a settled life as fast as possible, struggling to adapt to a wild world, but our own oral tradition has long maintained the stories of how we once lived as nomads. While some of these traditions won't work well in the mountains, the lessons of self-sufficiency may find use in the wasteland. Perhaps one of the strangest of these lessons to outsiders is the return of the use of bows. The arrival of guns once thrown under dominance of the region, it may seem strange to return to such a primitive weapon, but 
Bullets are a limited resource in the mountains. And the few fools who summoned a horde of pharaohs by letting the crack of a gunshot echo between the mountains and live to tell the tale of some choice words on the matter. Chief Old Gun might swear by his pistol, but I think bringing archery back would do our people good. Besides, bows are way cooler. Hey, there you go, nice. Our oldest neighbor. Weapon capture ratio. I do want to go to war too. Friends of the planning for the future. The clans worry too much about the past. There's one thing I learned about my adventures is that clinging to the past forever uh, is no way to forward. I cannot allow my people to be held back by the old world blues from Chief Jeremy Oldgun. These people are killing each other now. And the chief joined the NCR, eh? Very nice. Having this extra research slot is going to be so good. Ah, oh, look at that peepee. -pee. Uh, can't go there. Yeah, we need more war support. Uh huh. You know what? Screw it. I want any more political power. Red physician. Just by Wogel's times. Honest speaker. That's nice. We'll grab you. It's not going to do very much, but hopefully over time it does something for us. Can we throw on. Of course, the native guards are going to get some extra stuff too, anyways. It's probably just best to hold on to RMXB for now. To build a few new future. Morning Stag speaks of the past with such light in his eyes, but he seems to forget that it's not a place where we could ever hope to visit. The future, uncertain as it is, is what we must consider for people's sake. I've seen more than enough war for one lifetime, but I know that while the remnants of America and Zack Company remain, our people are not yet safe. We should take action to prepare for their return and reach out to what friends we can find that might help us survive their onslaught. But how will we deal with them, you ask? Well, when the time comes, we'll be ready to push them out of the mountains. When they attack us, they'll find the cannons impossible to siege. Defense war. I like being offensive. The park rangers. To the south, there's been a long great park. A garden of sorts protected from the hordes of the war and protected by the park rangers. We've heard stories of animals lost to the world still living there, but no war has been able to check for Enixi since the rise of the first families in Missoula and the arrival of the American government. Add anti-tank rifles to all supporting divisions. That's, that's great. Max training. Special force design cost. 1,000 manpower. Middle mark. Cult of Liberty. MacArthur's claims. So let's go through this way. We can maybe get claims of MacArthur, and if they're distracted, they can't do very much. They're friends of the past. Great disaster faced the people on the coast. A mad immortal has broken and enslaved the people who live there, and now fights to oppress the region again. Or the whole region. We found some survivors of a warrior band that fled this terror, and helped them on their way to safety in the mountains. Perhaps when the time comes, they will help us as well. At least we hope so. Rangers to the south. The park rangers to the south have long been friends of the Nitsitapi, working to keep peace in the Rocky Mountains. Ever since the bombs fell. Before the coming, becoming chief, I went on a few adventures with them, forging bonds of friendship that would last decades. But now they have fallen on hard times, and with their eternal so called enclave to MacArthur Air Force Base, communications have become quite difficult. Worse, rumors say that the first ecologist was killed by cultists while attempting to keep the peace in Idaho, and leadership has fallen upon inexperienced uh, shoulders. Perhaps it's time to rekindle friendship before it's too late. Let's hope it's not already. Offer mutual protection. Because then they're in two front war, this opens them up too. That might be really, really good for us. Uh huh. Uh, well, I would like that one. Uh, I do want to get down here too. Because we gotta get down there. So, Gardens of the Sacred Rivers. Water is the source of life and our most sacred research. It is according to our legends. Which, what separates the uh, Sik Sik Aitetapi from the rest of mankind after all? But with the Great War, the ancient spirits of the rivers have taken new forms. Drinkers of the Black Water. While we all know the story of the Black Water that made us who we are, many have let themselves believe it's only a myth. But near the side of this ancient story, a clan has made an amazing discovery. A cave of strange plants in which the bl black water flows. Those that drink it are changed, sometimes for better, sometimes for the worse. Could this be a gift from the creator or another old world mistake? Wardens to the north. Recently with the rise of the terrible warlord, the western coast has fallen under tyranny. While one of the groups displaced by this, the Wardens of the White have fled, splintering into small groups lost and confused without their leaders. A group of them found their way to our territory a few years ago, and we gave them help needed to survive and carry on their journey north. Now they become more established in the mountain passes, and remain thankful for help. Perhaps they'll repay our favor someday. A few even decide to stay and help after all. Good. No, oh, we can't begin scanning program. That sucks. Uh, probably don't need to settle the people down just yet. Uh, we can consider PP. It's been army training. It's fine. We're going to need numbers for this. 
Wolf skin hunters, huh? And then, between a rock, the American forces to the south, raided and robots to the north, and the Rockies to our west. There's no room for us to grow without removing one of them. But there are no will to be so petty raiders. There are armored machines and men that will shrug off most weapons with ease. We're going to need new weapons if we want to break out of this cage for morning stag. That'd be great. This ain't gonna do very much, but that's alright. Mm, the water's in the mountain. Basic naval tech, very nice. Water's been a strange thing for the Nitsitapi. Bottled to every living thing, we drink from the rivers and water our fields, yet we're cautious to do anything else. In our ancient days, our ancestors were reluctant to even step in boats for the fear of the dark spirits that dwelled under the surface. This superstition began to fade when we were pushed into the, to the reservation, but reemerged when the spirits of the rivers and lakes were replaced with mire lyrics and lake lyrics. But despite our reluctance to travel it, the water is also sacred to us, and the rivers is under our protection. One of the oldest stories speaks of how long ago all mankind uh, spoke the same language, and so Napi, the old man, invited every people to Chief Mountain to drink many colors of water. When everyone was done, they were confused speaking different languages. Only the Siksik Aitsitapi would drink the black water continue to speak the same language as before, at least that's how the story goes. Jeremy paused his story for a moment to consider. He had always been skeptical about his story, but the story has been circulating that a clan had found the black waters to a cave in the north. Perhaps there was some truth to the story he had always questioned. Perhaps it's time to look into these rumors. Perhaps. Between a rock and learning from others. The Nitsitapi have a long history of being warriors, but it's not always been one of victory. Whenever new technologies and peoples arrive to upset the balance, we've been forced to adapt and learn, them from, to learn from them to survive. From our wardens, park rangers, and even a few survivors of that company, wars all surround us, and there's wisdom in learning from all of them. Very true. And there go the storm monitors. You know what? Sneering imperialist? Uh, let's go here. He's level one, you gotta be inspirational. You're an infantry leader, you're gonna be. You know, you're gonna be a local leader. I like giver. You know, leave many mighty armies. Happy February, everybody. And then what? A second sip of the black water. It was one of the nomadic clans I found at deep in a cave by the sacred chief mountain. Strange dark plants grow among a flowing black river. Those who drink it are changed. Old Gun followed his guide cautiously as the rocks were wet and treacherous in this age, but something like this he could not ignore any longer. They said it was like a trial. Those brave enough to drink and become sick and fell into a deep sleep. Oh boy. When they awoke, one or two things happened. Those who had passed felt their minds expand. They master languages in days, and even before they learn an outlander's a language they can understand what they're saying, just by feeling the intention. In turn, the outlanders understood their words, despite never learning our language. The most surprising of all is that it seemed to extend even to animals. It's not like they can read minds, but when the dogs bark or a ragstag coughs, they can understand it, and it seems that the animals understand them too, as well as they can. The duo descended the rocks and paused before the waters flowed, slow and vicious, slightly viscous, tiny, flickering. Bulbs that gently glowed were growing from the black vines across the walls and ceilings. And the rest, what about the others, those who don't want to wake up with this new gift? When they wake up, they lose their language entirely, cannot speak, cannot understand, cannot read or write. No matter how hard we try, I have been unable to teach them any of this again. Only those who pass, the speakers, can understand them anymore. One was so distraught he tried to drink the water again and he did not wake up. Old Gun marveled at the cave before him but held his breath. Was this some sort of lost manifest experiment? Some bizarre creation of FEV or radiation, or was this water really a gift from the Napi? He did not know, but he knew something must be done. The people of other clans had heard the stories and wanted to try the water themselves. He would have to make a statement for now. Very well. Those who are brave may try to drink the water, but they must be informed of the risks and prepare for what shall happen should they lose their speech. They must find a willing speaker first to speak for them should they fall. This water is dangerous, but it could be the key to our future. May it bring the world together as one like before. Oh. We're very heavy on special forces, one as you can tell. George, yeah, huh? Because I need like six here ish just to hold the line. I'm going to need like five down here. I'm going to need three divisions to push through here. Um. 
don't mind less resistance to get more better war support. Why not? We could use it. There we go. Learning from others and then repel the Americans, just in case. So when they go to war next, we can go to war with them. For too long, the Americans have pushed us back to reservations, always seeking more and more. I've heard the stories from their far travelers. This enclave made the worst form of American imperialism yet. We're going to wait for them to destroy us. We must attack. Of course, all core states of MacArthur we own will be 50% cheaper to core. Well, that'll be good. New Coca Cola plant reopened. The Code of Liberty has uh, invited all Montanans to the outskirts of Havre uh, to attend re and reopening the New Coca Cola factory. When pressed for why they opened it, the Code official stated the people wanted comfort and a place to work, and the factory will provide it. People attending the event were quoted as saying this New Coca Cola tastes worse than the one we found outside. Maybe some things are better left in the past. Yeah, sometimes they are. Good. Start cranking up, cranking them out. Did you get it? You did good. Air guard got it too. Awesome. That's one of those rare things that usually doesn't happen. Keep the army, bring your civilization. Uh, most of all, I want defense. We're going to be offensive a little bit. And then uh, it. The essence of all life is the supreme light of the creator spread across all creation. Though it, through it all things are created equal, the animals, humans, and plants all have their strengths and purposes, even the ways, and we must remember this. And then gifts of Natosi. Our people hold to the traditions that Natosi, the sun, was created by Apestotoka, the creator, to provide warmth and light to all creation. Even near the cold mountains, we have, he has found ways to use the warmth of Natosi to help us survive. Montana military, a gun behind every blade of grass, they say, well, first we need to have some in our hands, first of all. Yeah. Ah! Oh, would you look at that? Might be the perfect opportunity for us. Attack us. You guys are going in immediately. You guys can absolutely go in. We gotta be very strategic about this, though, because we have to cut them off. If we can destroy that division, that'd be awesome. Oh, hello there. Well, we have them encircled here, which is good. What you need to do is go here. Two divisions of power armor, there's no way in the world we can actually do that. Oh boy. This might have been a bad idea. Gunsmithing's good. Give him an out. The light of Natosi. According to the legends of our people, Natosi the sun created everything in the heavens and earth. Or was it Apestoktok who was a creator? Perhaps not be the old man, or were they all family or the same? Truth be told, every nation has their own story of creation. After all of these years, even I struggle to keep them straight. Uh, the truth is, much of our history has been lost, muddled by time, but what is important is that the, like, this world was made as a gift. Apestoktok gave us names, Napi gave us language, and Natosa gives us warmth. Learning to live in the mountains has been harsh, but these two are gifts. A chance for our people to survive in this broken world and now gift you the heritage of our peoples. Heed these lessons and you will grow to be strong enough to survive the wasteland. No matter how desolate, all that Nintosa's light touches is home. So we're kind of between a rock and a hard place right now. It's not good, not ideal. You gotta kill off this power armor division, please, for the love of God. Uh, this is not good either. We can survive against the infantry. Against the special forces, man, well, maybe not so much. You're 
character tree thing. You've got to hold. Wow. Okay, so this is really bad then. Why, why, why are you doing this? You can't destroy this one division here first. Yeah, this is really bad. No! God! Dang it! Did we get him at least? We've lost quite a few guys. Yellowstone should be doing better than this, in all honesty. How many divisions do they have? Seven to... God, we are so under-equipped for this type of war. The essence of everything. So, Georgian and Listener. I know it's a long name, but... It's a... By the Pioli, pa, maybe the most important value, because it's the essence of everything. It means that all living things are equal. Our neighbors believe that man stands atop the world and has the right to do with what he pleases, but we have always known better. All that thinking we did was end the world that was. You must learn to accept that there is value in every creature and plant. All beings are gifted with strengths and all help keep the world in balance. In the wasteland, there's more, this is more true than ever. It's only by learning to adapt to the life of this new world that our people have survived. Someday you too find, will find your strengths. Um, the Okan. The Okan of Medicine Lodge Ceremony is one of our most sacred rites and practices. We gather from the far corners of our lands to offer prayers up to the Creator, while men dance around a central pole for many hours. Requests for blessings from the sun made over an entire year are repaid with symbolic sacrifice, but our people are filled with the resolve to survive the next year. Push to the Rockies. The Rocky Mountains were not, in a traditional sense, our homelands. We're a nation bound to the plains, who would walk these passes occasionally between hunts to retreat for the winter, but being forced to live in them full time has been a harsh change, but this is the land we have left. We'll fight to the end to protect it, and we'll make them, make you, make them a new home. Ever loyal Imita. Such good boys, our Imita have survived with minimal mutation here in the mountains, remaining loyal companions. They are the only animals that were part of our ancient way of life we could save, and one might almost think they know if I was with us how closely they walk alongside with us. Mm. No one what shoot. What's the point of having a gun if we can't shoot it correctly? Commanding equally? The ability to listen to each other and to pick and respect a leader, these are critical things to the society. How to? If you want to do anything, we got another right tool to pull it off and build in a town. The town is most the homely thing one can make. Well, we've done okay. We've we've expanded a little bit. It helps that the Yellowstone Park has decided to actually push through MacArthur, where the former um, stormmongers were, um, and we're doing okay. It's not been great. By God, it, it has not been great. But we've had enough people move around and whatnot to the point where we can encircle them and hopefully keep these guys in place. Uh, I actually might recommend you guys help out out here because we need help up there. We're holding the line up here. Uh, could we actually do something here, maybe? Could we go around and make, perhaps? That'd be nice. I mean, our guys aren't that great. But we're doing basically whatever we can to help destroy them up here, too. Um, yeah, this special armor, special forces divisions, you know, their power armor. Very strong. Really freaking strong. But as long as uh, the AI doesn't do too much about it, we're okay with that. As you see, we're trying to get rid of these divisions too, so. It is definitely a bloodbath overall. Hey, we got rid of one more division. Nice. You guys are moving down pretty darn nicely. Uh, we're doing no one who's shooting. What's the point of having a gun if you can't shoot it correctly? That's very true. Uh, get better pioneer kits, slash melee weaponry. Uh, commando bows, I think, are in. So see what happens. Um, you guys are doing very well down here. If we can get MacArthur Air Force Base, I think that might just capitulate them. I'm hoping that's the case at least. Uh, we might be able to circle these guys too. Oh, cha ching. Um, we're oldest neighbors. Uh, the Nitsitapi had never had many friends or allies before the war, or even before settlers came from the east. Our relationships with our fellow first peoples only truly began to flourish when we needed to stand together against oppression. And with the return of the American government, it's time to rally the First Nations again. You know what? I don't. I want you all on this. With this stuff. Oh, okay then. Um, I'll take whatever we can through here. 
looks like they might be taking that too. It's alright. You know what? Have we got help doing this? I'm okay with that. I don't think we could, can we take all? I don't think we can, can we? That might be a bit too much. Yellowstone might come and fight us for it. But if we can't take it all, we might as well, right? All right, thank you, Yellowstone. Thanks for taking one for the team. I am totally okay with this. Uh, Caravan guards, waste on pacification, all the good stuff. We're out of stuff here too. Just in case, we are going to put ourselves next to middle mark. I hope they don't come for us, but you never know. Uh, I'll get rid of one for now because we're going to expand you guys soon too. Um, our oldest neighbors are nice. Uh, our rifle lands. It's taken almost 300 years, but we finally started reclaiming traditional homelands from the American government. Good riddance. And new guns. Even an old gun can learn new tricks. What? Bad joke? Eh. What do kids know? Still, many of our warriors captured American weapons and skirmishes with them, giving us ample opportunity to study them and prove our own. That's true. Morning the Enixi. The loss of the Enixi, the bison, weighs heavily on our hearts. So much of our way of life was built around what we were forced to adapt. First, the reservations into waste and without them. This has not been easy on our people, so we mourn the Creator's greatest gift to our people that we may someday move on. Unity among the First People Canadians and Americans were opposed to each other on many things, but when it came to the native peoples, they worked together with perfect civility, drawing up borders and treaties that turned each of us against one another and seized what they could for themselves. Truth be told, a relationship with the First Neighbors was not always a kind one, and our warriors saw past us Past saw us make many of our own enemies, were also willing to make en peace willing to make peace when the fighting had gone on too long. Though we may be very different, we share a history of struggle to assert our rights to our home and our own way of life. It is time to bury old grudges and turn our ancient rivals into new friends and ensure that never happens again. We shall send our speakers to win their support. Sure, why not? Um uh, we want more manpower. Yeah. Yeah, because we were trying to get more uh, manpower this way as well. Uh, land doctrine, it is still going on, which is good. And get a tiny bit more manpower right now. And construction speed, and we just lost all that manpower. Hmm, it's not bad. What else we got? Wolfskin hunters. Old World Wall holds. Uh, we could really use this one too. We're building the societies. Oh, hello. Uh, well, this one. We did that one already. Uh huh. Commanding equally. There you go. Let's see. Life without the buffalo. <clears throat> Culture of liberty, eh? What a shame. Inixi, the bison, was the greatest of all animals that live in our ancestors. Uh, was the greatest animal in the lives of our ancestors for thousands of years. They gave us food, clothes, and tools, and more, and nothing went to waste. But in the time. Their time, their numbers went up to American overhunting, and when the Great War came, the Apollo killed off the herds that we preserved. It is true that our culture shifted away from using the bison for many years by that point, but the wounds to our pride is not yet recovered. And with the world destroyed, we are left unable to rely upon our old ways for other new ones forced onto us. But are there rumors they live on somewhere in the wasteland? I'm glad they what live on. Uh, I'm gonna pull half of you away. And put you guys here. Beep. Beep. And beep. There we go. Hmm. Equal supply, good hearts. Plenty of old supplies are still around here in the old stores even today. Scammed away. Which would be great. Wolf skin hunters. Truth be told, I'm not certain this practice ever was really one of ours. I can only find old books about it, and the oral tradition says it's been lost. But Born Stag seems so enamored with an old painting that supposedly depicts people using this tactic, I could already stop him from trying it. Oh god, they've... How much... Oh, they're still at war. Okay. Yeah. That's what I figured as much. Alright, let's see. Hmm... Yeah, that would be good for what we need right now. Production factories, the old rust belt remnants could go far here without attending. 
The people of Montana. The people of Montana here are caught between the Cosmic Cards and the Brotherhood. We must stand united. Nice. Yeah, we need more factories too. We're trying. It's good. Native Guard. It's gonna hurt us for manpower for quite a bit. Go. No expand. I couldn't see anything. That's what we can't do. Armed workshops would be nice. We need two year conscription at the very least. Chief Alliance is fine. Ah, Cult of Liberty is not doing so well, eh? Good. Now, hmm, it's not bad either. The old brickworks, the old factories make for great new factories too. What are you reading this for exactly? Zach Company. The arms of Zach Company spread across Montana finally, and with uh, <clears throat> with them, their teachings as well. Rebuilding society. Society's own ancient way of organizing people across each clan and nation. Almost every boy of a certain age who finishes vision quest will be initiated into society. And for every four years, they advance out of the current society to a new one, passing gifts to those who pass the ranks down to the newcomers. And by the time they were adults, all men in society will see each other's brothers. Bringing back to the societies will help organize the youth and provide a greater sense of camaraderie. Very true. Build more sweat lodges. The sweat lodge is about the building in a ceremony where an individual or small group is ritually purified by enduring the extreme heat. And some ceremonies offering prayer chain for several hours. The experience will help both the physical and spiritual health of our people, and we should reintroduce the practice where it has been forgotten. And restoring vision quests. Vision quests were grueling experiences, even before the world became a wasteland. Older boys experienced days of fasting and prayer in the wilderness, but now with the occasional uh, the Agua attack with the goal of seeing a vision of the futures. Should they return, they are welcome and ready for the next step, joining a society. But even though uh, we've uh, it's not a long video, but I think I've got it in there. I've got other things to do, and we're going to continue on in the next episode. Having a good old time, and uh, yeah, continue expanding the First Peoples Nation here. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. I also continue on and try to expand our territory some more. Thanks for watching. Have a great Nitsitapi rest of your day.